are new details this morning about the Paris mother accused of torturing and abusing her 13 children. Uh, some suggest she may have been practicing witchcraft. A new tell-all book written by Louise Turpin's sister is revealing shocking details about the family's history. In the book, she says Turpin became obsessed with witchcraft, claiming a Ouija board told her she was going to have another child. Dude, this is intense. Uh, we have Stephen, how do you pronounce your last name? Ban Cars. Ban Cars. Yeah. Stephen Ban Cars from Canada mm -hmm. on his journey out of New Age. And man, there, when you talk about New Age, there's just so many different religions and so much yeah. information. We, when you're talking about all these different thing books that you, you've mm -hmm. been pulling from, yeah. the doctrines of demons. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... And it's, you know what? It's a huge industry, right? It's a huge industry. Before we go to break, you know, yeah. a, a recent study, a series of recent studies from the Pew Research Center shows that um, <clears throat> 20, 25 percent of Americans believe in astrology. Twenty. Oh, we just got that break, Mark. Gotcha. So we will be back. A chilling 911 call was played today in a California courtroom. It was the voice of a girl who had just escaped a horrifying situation where she and her 12 siblings were allegedly abused and tortured by their parents. She tells the 911 operator, my parents are abusive, they abuse us, and my two little sisters right now are chained up. She obviously has the personality that she's gonna, gonna risk herself for others, and she did that and she managed to get out. That call has not been released publicly. I have never been out. I live in a family of 15 people and my parents are abusive. Her mother reportedly wept in court as she listened to her daughter tell the dispatcher in a soft voice, they abuse us and my two little sisters are chained up. We don't really do school. I haven't finished first grade and I'm 17. Sometimes I wake up and I can't breathe because of how dirty the house is. We never take baths. That's for hell, but I'm still Basically, I was looking at my phone and I got a text message from one of my friends that sends me amazing testimonies every once in a while. And I received this link to the uh, 700 Club and it was this guy by the name of Steve Bancar and um, it was talking about his exit out of the New Age movement. And I am very interested in the New Age movement and anything that has to do with the occult because I believe 100% it's having a huge influence on culture whether we see it or not. As I tour public high schools and middle schools, I talk to students. And as you start talking to me, you start realizing that there's m more people into the Ouija board than you think. Because there was a movie that came out, Ouija, uh, about a year ago. And there was this huge uh, movement of the Ouija board coming back with kids experimenting. And then you start talking to kids and they're into angel cards and tarot cards. And then you're watching movies of the supernatural and paranormal activities and Harry Potter and... As you start digging into these movies, you see the occult, how it's penetrating the culture, and it just starts off so innocent, like, oh, Harry Potter, it's a story about these kids learning how to go to school to learn, they don't say witchcraft, magic, and it's infiltrating the youth. And I've heard so many different stories of supernatural things happening in homes with kids because of the Harry Potter movie, and this is why I think it's urgent and important that we do expose this. This is common in the new age movement to, to experience these kind of experiences all the time all the time some you know what 
a lot of the material in the New Age movement, you go to a, a book a bookstore, you look at the New Age section, a lot of the material you'll see there is what's called channeled material. It's actually given by these entities. So people go into a trance-like state of consciousness. Right. They reach out to what they believe are aliens or spirit guides, and then they're writing things down as this information's coming through. And hence you have... Doctrines of demons. The doctrines of demons, First Timothy 4, one, right? Yes. Um, literally the doc doctrines of demons and all the channel material that's oriented away from Christ. I want to expose something else because I was yeah. watching some of your videos last mm -hmm. night and that video you were talking about the idols in, mm -hmm. in your house. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that because there's a lot of people that have these, uh, they go, they travel to different countries and they mm -hmm. get like these crazy masks from like mm -hmm. Africa yeah, yeah. or they have like the Buddha mm -hmm. or they have like Hindu mm -hmm. idols or even like the God with the, the it's, it's like a woman face and then it has like a like a mermaid body, I think what God <laughs> yeah. that is, you know, there's like, sure, sure. there's all these different gods, you know, yeah. from different religions, but just the innocence of like, oh, you know, I collected these from the world I have them in my house. Tell us about that. You're digging into different religions at this point. I'm digging into different, yeah, different religions, yeah. Um, but it, it, it through the lens of new age, new age, new age. Well, a lot. It seems like as I've studied a lot of that stuff, it seems mm -hmm. like there's a. It's just all packaged different. A lot of the different religions and new age, it all kind of. It's the same. There's similar aspects of it, but it's mm -hmm. kind of packaged different. Yeah, it's packaged a little different depending on uh, what the source material re you're reading is. But it ultimately gets reduced back down to the the doctrine of man, which is that man is divine, and really this is um, Satan's plan hasn't improved at all in the last well, six thousand years. It's the same lie. What did he say? I want to be like the Most High God. <laughs> He's so, yeah. So that's Isaiah 14. He said, yeah. I want to uh, ascend to the heights of God, right? And then um, Ezekiel 28 is another one. But back in Genesis, Genesis 3, you know, if you eat from this this tree of knowledge of oh, good yeah, and true. evil, right? What's he say? So basically, here's a tree of knowledge and good and, and evil. Yep. Here's some secret knowledge, some special knowledge, right? If you eat from that tree, you will become as gods. You will become like God. And that's why he doesn't want you eating it is because he knows that you're going to ascend to his height when you eat from the tree. And so I you know it, the difference between good and evil and yeah. right. You know the difference between good and evil. Um, but his lie was, you know, through secret knowledge, you can become as God uh, through special revelation, special knowledge. And that's the exact same thing in the new age movement. And some will go as far such as, you know, the mother of the new age movement, Helena Blavatsky openly praising Satan in her book, her main work called the secret doctrine, um, saying Satan's the spiritual father of mankind, you know, because he's the one who, broke mankind out of this kind of controlled bigoted system that Yahweh created and here comes Lucifer into the rescue saying hey you know here you can enact on your free will and you can Dude, do that's your own a trip thing. yeah so this is something that they teach in Gnosticism that uh, Yahweh is evil um, and he, the evil Yahweh created the world and then Lucifer comes along and he's trying to empower man and liberate man and um, it's all about man's own exaltation and freedom, which is really what the whole principle of Satanism is about. If you read the Satanic Bible. I was just going to say it because I've, I've done some research on the Satanic Bible. It's all about that. So it, that's that's why it's so appealing. That's right. That's, uh, that's right. That's and, why it's so appealing. But, I get it. But that's also why Anton LaVey, the father of the Church of Satan, accuses the New Age movement of stealing its practices and beliefs from Satanism. He, he accuses them of being hypocritical and not attributing these beliefs and these practices to whom they rightly belong, namely the devil. So we're told in scripture, you know, the idol in and of itself, it's a piece of wood. Yep. It's just rearranged molecules. It doesn't have any any power in and of itself, but we're told there is a spirituality behind this idol that it's pointing to, that it's connected to, yep. right? And that this spirituality is demonic in nature. And so when, when the Bible says, you know, uh, that what they offer unto idols, they offer unto demons, that doesn't like demons aren't just present on the idol when an offering is being made. It's not, they don't just appear there all of a sudden when a bowl of grapes is in front of a Krishna idol. They're there when the bowl of grapes isn't there. They're connected to it. And so when you have things in your house 
that are implicitly connected to beings in another realm. You're inviting, you're inviting, I believe you're inviting, you're giving demons leeway into your home. The door is right open. The door is open. Yeah, um, I, I would say from scripture, if we look at what the Bible has to say about, you know, religio spiritual practices from pagan nations apart from Israel, what you see is in Leviticus 17, 7, when Israel goes apostate and starts serving these gods of other nations, it says that they were sacrifice, making sacrifices unto goat demons. Right? And De Deuteronomy 10, 22, when they do it again, he the Bible says that they were sacrificing to demons that were no gods. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verses 20 to 22, he says, I imply that what pagans offer unto idols, they offer unto demons. He says, you can't sit at the table of demons and the table of the Lord. You can't drink the cup of devils and the cup of the Lord. Like we're literally just taking a step into the wrong kingdom. And I, um, I didn't know I was doing that. Um, so I'm completely entrenched in this stuff, thinking I'm doing God's, God's will. And uh, the whole time I'm completely morally perverse. And what happened was I realized, um, I don't know if the, God started like quickening my conscience or the Holy Spirit started doing some kind of work. I mean, he must have been drawing me, but yeah, totally. things that I had been doing and suppressing and lying about, I couldn't continue doing it. It just didn't sit well with me anymore. And I reached a point where it was so close to the surface of my being that uh, the girlfriend I was with at the time, um, she was like, you, you need to tell me, like, you can't go to the grave holding on to this stuff. And I was virtually living a double life in our, in our relationship. And so um, I confessed everything, like every conscious memory. I wasn't actually like going around sleeping around with other people, but it was pretty much everything but that, yeah. um, everything but physical. And so I confessed, you know, I've been lying about this, been lying about that. And um, I saw the impact that that had, the trauma that created, that wrecked me, wrecked her, wrecked me. So we go back to my mother's house and she's a born again Christian. She's this whole time she's praying for me. This whole time she, you know, thinks I'm lost and deceived, but she is loving on me. Like she accepts me, even though she doesn't accept my beliefs. And I didn't get offended that she didn't accept my beliefs. I, she accepted me. You know, some people get offended when their beliefs get questions. Like who, your beliefs aren't you. You hold certain beliefs. Your beliefs don't, they aren't you. Right. You're a person, right? So my mom was loving me as a person, but disagreeing with my beliefs. And so just being really supportive. I don't think my dad knew the gravity of what I was doing, what I was involved with. He was just excited that, you know, he could support me and me being successful in something. Yeah. And I mean, it was that, I mean, you, you went through hell. I don't want to discredit that. Your whole life's falling apart mm -hmm. here. And you're just like, yeah, I'll just like, how, how, like what? I mean, being where you were at, how can you just say that easy? Like, because my prayer of salvation was not so much. I'm going to submit my life to your Lordship. Yeah. My prayer it? of salvation was I'm going to <laughs> seek you for who you are. I'm going to stop being dishonest about oh, my okay. seeking. Yeah. And I want to, like, I, I was saying words, like I give my life to you, whatever, but in my spirit and in my mind, it's like, Jesus, if you're real, like I need to know if you're real, I, I need to, I need to stop trying to pretend that you're someone you're not. I want to know who you are exactly as you are. And so That's the next, dope. yeah. So the next two weeks went by and, and nothing really changed in my life. Still living in sin, still having, you know, all the occult stuff in my house and whatever. And, um, it reached a point where uh, I had to confess a whole nother round of sin and uh, it was worse than the first one and it was just bad. It was just bad. I was depraved. I was completely depraved. So I confessed this whole second round of sin and I, I, that was when I really saw myself in the mirror. Like I'm dirty. Like I'm evil. You know, the Bible says that you once were darkness and now you're light. I was darkness, you know. I was an image bearer, but I was spiritually dead and dark. And I, I saw in my, in front of me, ever my brokenness, my sin against a holy God, and the fact that I knew I had I, I had done something. I had sinned against humanity. I had sinned against God, and I was so broken. My thoughts were so twisted. My mind was so jacked up from all the sin. I could not. I couldn't fix anything on my own. I, I had nothing. I had no options, no hope. The Bible says, you know, we were with, without hope. And without God in the world prior to Christ um, and in Ephesians 2. And so I went outside one night on the back balcony of my house and I fell at the feet of the Lord. And I was like, I'm, I'm genuine. I apologize. I, re I need you. I repent. I'm sorry for the life I lived 
and I was I was bawling. I was just crying on my face. I was like, I have nothing. I have nothing. I need you. I'm sorry. And um, that's when I encountered his presence for the first time. What was that like? Um, it was, he was really, really um, making sure I knew who he was. Yes. It was, for me, it was less about, you know, I wasn't reaching out saying, Lord, I need love. I need love. It was, uh, I need answers. And I need hope. And uh, um, just completely being consumed by his presence around me and, and knowing the simplicity of it all. It's the Jesus of the New Testament. He's the son of God. He died for my sins. Jesus is Lord. That's all it is. That's all I could say in my head. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Dude, that is amazing. And the Bible says no one says Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. And th- and what was crazy to me was not only was this presence, I, it felt like it was in front of me. It felt like he was in front of me, but it was also filling me. It was also inside of me now. And I, uh, I was listening to the sounds around me in, in nature, like in the spirit. I was detecting what was going on while he was there. And like the sounds of nature, they were, they were glorifying him. They recognized him when he showed up. I could, I don't know if God was just showing, like I, <sighs> somehow they knew, you know, creation knew who he was, you know, creation's like the Kings here, you know? <sighs> and, uh, I, I sensed somehow, I don't know if the Holy Spirit showed me that they sensed it, but I'm like, if even creation itself cries out, you know, I'm done. I'm done. So that's when I went back inside and uh, the Holy Spirit started showing me the deception, the flaws, the agenda and everything I had researched. Um, the biggest one was this obsession with aliens that I had I was putting pieces together you know all of these cultures that were visited by these aliens they were all obsessed with human sacrifice really oh yeah they don't tell you that on ancient aliens they all believed that these beings were supernatural none of them there's not a single ancient text in the world that attributes these beings as coming from another planet none they all believed they were spiritual in nature and that their way to appease and connect with them was through blood sacrifice. And I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of a big deal. I can see that demons are trying to set up all these world religions to kind of murk up and confuse people and lead people away from what I, what I just experienced. Every, all of this is about what I just experienced. Everything. Everything's about him. This whole life is about him. I thought that was narrow and bigoted and whatever. It is narrow. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. It is narrow. The truth is narrow. The truth is exclusive by nature. But I, I had the truth living in me now. And I remember st- I remember being like, oh my gosh, I've been wrong. It wasn't guilt. It wasn't guilt and condemnation. It was just, wow, I was wrong. Yeah. And I remember staring at my bookshelf and I had all these books lined up. And I remember peace, just the peace of God. You never have to ask who, who, who God is ever again. He lives in you now. He just showed you who he is.